moving on to hockey now. How are you, Sam Spooner? Yeah, not too bad. Got here just in time. A little bit sweaty. <laughs> How was your game? It was good. It was tough. Um, toe to toe, young players on show and some old players that I still look up to as a 34 year old semi retired, well, trying to retire no. hockey player. <laughs> um, well, I just, I can't. I can't stop myself. So, uh, but yeah, no, it was a really good game. I left about 15 minutes towards the end so I can get here, but Thank didn't you. change I the score. Thank you, I appreciate it. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> um, okay, let's start in the women's prem and uh, big result for um, for Backers A. Valkyries A3, Backers A3. Yeah, and you know what? Backers A, they might not be in the title chase, but they always seem to have a say on the destination of the title. Mm. And this is their say this year. Now, uh, Valkyries A, you'd expect them to, to beat Backers A fairly convincingly, but Last week's performance, <clears throat> you could see that they'd got better and better. It was just a little bit of fitness towards the end of the game where Vikings sort of upped it a bit. This week, they didn't let that affect them. Three all of Valkyries A. Their goal scorers of Valkyries A were Jess Loder, Sienna Dunn and Leanne Prescott. Backers A, Sam Hassel 2 and Lucy Quine. And it does now put Valkyries A three points behind Vikings, but still to play Vikings twice. So they could still get four points out of it. So it's an important result. Mm-hmm. but it's still in Valkyrie's hands. Okay. Um, moving on, we've got Valkyrie's beat for Saracens 2. Good performance from Saracens. Mm. Um, it shows improvement again. Uh, you know, they, I think at the start of the season there were probably a, a personnel issues, but now they, they, they've got their, their heads, they've got their heads in the right place and they're actually competing with teams that they weren't previously before. Valkyrie's beat, really good result for them. Uh, it's, it just continues to show that they deserve to be in this league and you know they're challenging uh, the established order. Uh, goal scorers are Florence Barber with two, Emma Muller, Emma Miller and Lisa Pugh for the for the Valkyries. Saracens was Lucy Farragut and Dulcie Tia. Then we have Ramsey three, Harlequins nil. And this is a big performance from Harlequins. You know, I'd have ex- I, I I actually expect them to get beaten by quite a lot. You know, when you've conceded eighty one goals in eight games, you know you and they've already played all these sides once already you'd you kind of expect them to probably lose by a few more but actually it's a really good performance from them and it just shows they've just not stopped fighting Ramsey though they've had a disappointing start to the season and they really want to kick on and uh, they seem to be doing that now the grinding results out that previously may have gone against them but nice win for them Charlotte Oldfield Vic Garner and Christina Commune on the score sheet for Ramsey and then finally in the women's prem Castletown A nil Vikings A 2 monumental performance mm. um, from Castan A's defence here today. Um, apparently there is, you know, it put probably a bit of an exaggeration, but you know, they said, the text message said around 35 short corners or penalty corners. Wow. And Castan A were able to keep them out. And Vikings A, you know, they've always got a goal in them. And uh, the, Kim Carney and Zoe Crow on the score sheet, the sisters there uh, for Vikings A, put some three points clear at the top. But Castan A, really proud of themselves for that. Good. Uh, moving on to the men's prem, and we have Saracens A4, Ramsey A9. Again, this shows improvement from Saracens A. It seems to be all out attack for both sides here. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, George Powell with a hat trick, and that's his first hat trick this year. And Andrew Wynn Stanley, uh, the old boy in that Saracens A team now. Um, Ramsey A, though, uh, they've improved as well. Um, they start the season, I have to say, really poorly. And, you know, if based on their form in the past two or three games, you'd probably say they were good enough for top four. Um, but they, they didn't start too well. Uh, Ramsey A's goal scorers with Jan Kane with two, Sam Moffat with two, John Garrett Jackson with two, Alex Neal, Tom Titsos and Sam Robertson all with one. Then we've got Vikings B, nil, Valkyries A, eight. Yeah, Valkyries A, they move into second place now, owing to other results. Robin Masson with three, although I have to say this, his captain did tell me that it should have been 12. But mm-hmm. we'll, we'll gloss over the, the misses. He's got a well-earned hat trick there. Uh, Ollie Webster and Greg Miller, uh, Connor Kame- Con- Conan Kameen and Luis Novo-Smith on the score sheet for Valkyries A. And then the next game was the most anticipated one in the men's prem, Backers A versus Vikings A, and that also finished 3-3. Yeah, and you know what? Vikings A just cannot get over the line with Backers. Mm. You know, that's in the past four games, that's three draws. One all, two all, four one loss, three all. What they, do they need to do? Backers just... the tra- Vikings are training hard. They're working hard. And their concentration over the past few weeks has been really good. It's improved, especially after that loss to Valakai Zay. That sort of shocked them into action. Um, it does mean that uh, Backers A are in, in command now. Um, unless the Valakai Zay can turn them over twice. Um, they're pretty much nailed on to be champions in my eyes. 
Uh, Vikings A, they have to rely on Bakers A losing an, another point somewhere. Probably against the likes of Alkaiers A. But Vikings A can be proud of that performance today, but they're... They just need to go one step further, that one extra goal or that you know that one extra save, mm. and they can do it. And uh, perfectly timed, we just had a text in for the Backers B Harlequins A score. Backers B five, Harlequins A one, and the text says, "Quins uh, Harlequin scorer was our very own Chris Cave, and that the score line doesn't reflect how close the match was." Yeah, and uh, you know Harlequins A again, the one of those sides that have been improving as the season's gone on. It's very much a consolidation year for them. 91 goals in eight games uh, they've conceded. It's now 96 in nine. Um, so it, rec- it, it represents improvement for them. Backers B, you know, a good result for them, 5-1. I haven't got the backers B goal scorers, I don't think. They have just come through this very second. We've got Craig Lease with two, Kean Led- Ledwidge, Sean Corlett and Elliot Reed. Yeah, Elliot Reed's a really good young player. He's a first team player as well, but under eighteen, so he can play both. And he's I will say that he is the most my favourite young player as it stands now. Luis Novo Smith was, but he's too old now. <laughs> Elliot Reed is my favourite young Why? player. Why he's is just he got your such a good attitude mm. on the pitch. And he's a really nice guy off it as well. Good. Uh moving on to the women's div one, and we've got Ramsey B two, Backer C four. Yeah, big result for Backer C. They uh they go clear of the bottom of the table, so they move up they now go on four points, three points clear of Ramsey B. Lizzie Quayle with two for Ramsey B, Sandra Moore, Ellie Harris with two uh, with one each, and Lou Lou Meller with two for Backer C. Then we have Vikings B three, Castletown B nil. A big, big shout out to uh, Danny Coombs, the umpire here today. Um, I know it's Jess Birch who is desperately hunting for an umpire after a, a last minute uh, dropout due to uh, well unforeseen circumstances. Um, and literally just before the game, Danny Coombs has, has stepped up to umpire two today and playing her own game, I'm guessing, as well. So she's had a really busy day. So kudos to Danny Co- Coombs and thank mm. you very, very much. I had a shout out at lunchtime. Um, it meant Jess Birch was able to captain the Vikings B-side rather than umpire, and she scored today alongside Morven Smith and Ellen Barlow. And then finally in women's Div 1, we've got Valkyrie C nil, Backers B6. Yeah, and the message I got was uh, Valkyrie C were a bit shocked by the result almost, but Backers B did deserve the result. Um, Valkyrie C, you know, now they are three points behind Backers B. They do still have a game in hand. And they are still in a title race, but it's a big, big loss for them. They could have gone top if they'd won both their games in hand. But they still have a chance. Backers B's heroes today were Sam Franklin with two, Martha Broderick, Charlotte Fisher, Liv Knight and Isabella Craig, all with one. Were you expecting that game to be closer considering Valkyrie C were only one point behind Backers B? I did because Valkyrie C have been the, the surprise package this season, but it seems past couple of games they haven't quite had... Um, what they need going forward. They've always been defensively strong, but backers be they really turned up today. Um, at times they have struggled going forward, you know, and I think a part of that is you know their first team maybe taking their players as a B team. It's very hard to get consistency with a team, mm. um, but they've got their best squad out today, and and that's what's earned them the win. And it's shame. Uh, moving on to the men's division one, and these were all rearranged fixtures fixtures from uh, Hop Chine for the thirty first of October. So we have Castletown B one, Castletown A seven. Yeah, expected result. You know, Castown the Castown derbies um, are always a bit spicy. But Mark Bolton on the score sheet for Castown B, and he earned the uh, man of the match as well. Uh, Castown A, Christian Stereopoulos for the four. He's been scoring for fun recently. Mm-hmm. You know, two, three, four goals every game. Paul Kelly. The young Joe Savage, who's been very, very impressive when I've seen him this season, and can blame me on the score sheet there. Put it puts Castane on fourteen points. Then we have Ramsey B four, Saracens B two, and we had a message in saying this was a very clean game. Yeah, and you know what? I did not expect that result. Um and there's a couple of unexpected things here actually. And Ramsey B, they've got some of their their old players back that and uh, Richard Spate, the uh, captain, did turn around and say that you know, they've played this week. They're going to be broken for a few weeks now. <laughs> but uh, they've got their full squad out today. Gwen Davies with two. Keith Corkle, who's uh, another one of those sorts of players who, no matter what, he, he's he's getting older and older day by day now. But he, he's still got that speed of thought and those quick mm-hmm. hands. And uh, their, their first team goalkeeper, Christopher Wells, played outfield today and got on the score sheet for Ramsey B. Uh, Saracens B, welcome back. Kyle Kane. Um, it's been a few years before since I've said that. He's got on the score sheet today. And Christian Davies on the score sheet as well. 
Then we have Harlequins B versus Backers C, and that was a Harlequins win 12-1. But these two were on the same points in the league table at the start of today. Yeah, and I think, you know, Harlequins B have struggled, um, again, for consistency. When you look at the young players they've got on their sides, some of them have been playing first team and maybe they're clashed, so their under-18s can't play both games. Well, today there was no clash. Joe Middleton with a huge seven goals. Could have spread that out a bit, but... You know, well done. Uh, all the same. Seven goals is uh, is nothing to be snubbed. <laughs> ben Cunningham with two. David Smith with two. Aaron Blakemore. And back at C, I think it was Ian Wrigley. And then last, but by no means least, uh, we've got your game. So Packers, Colts, nil. Vikings, C, nil. And it wasn't from what we tried for Vikings, C. You know, Backers, Colts had their opportunities, um, but they weren't quite as clear cut as some of Vikings, C's. It was just a game. Of, it was just a case of being unable to finish and experience in front of goal, really. And mm-hmm. um, you know that cool head, but uh, it was a real good game, real physical in the middle of the park. I know I've got the scars and the bruises to to, to show I've for seen it. Them. Um, Joe Call it today, though I have to say, he's thirteen years old, playing in nets uh, against a, a senior team with some real senior players in there, and he put off probably Vikings' his best striker. Came out and met him well. His positional sense was brilliant, brave as anything. And from a 13-year-old goalkeeper, it's, uh, you don't see that very often. So really well done to him. He's one for the future. And the young Lucas Harding was an outsta- was outstanding at uh, right back today for Backers Colts, who's by far and away the man of the match. Brilliant stuff. Exciting times for the future. And then just quickly, we've had a couple texts in. Thank you very much from the under-16s Mixed League. So we have Ramsey nil, Vikings 7. Uh, yeah, scores for Vikings were Kyle Gunnion with three, Becca Kelly, Cameron Room, watch that name. His dad was an all right player, but Cameron Room's been brilliant at training the past couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. Ben Dougal with one. And a big thanks out to the umpires, Sandra Smith and Millie Gale. Um, and the other game was... Harlequins 1, Castletown 2. I think I've got that one here. Yeah, uh, Quinn's score was Callum Crellin 